You are listening to LearnOutLoud.com's production of the Dhammapada. This ancient Buddhist scripture is traditionally understood as a collection of answers that the Buddha gave to important spiritual and ethical questions. LearnOutLoud.com is pleased to present this newest volume in our series of important religious writing throughout history. For more audio devoted to the love of knowledge, please visit our website at www.learnoutloud.com. The Dhammapada, The Sayings of the Buddha Translated by F. Max Muller Chapter 1, The Twin Verses All that we are is the result of what we have thought. It is founded on our thoughts. It is made up of our thoughts. If a man speaks or acts with an evil thought, pain follows him, as the wheel follows the foot of the ox that draws the carriage. All that we are is the result of what we have thought. It is founded on our thoughts. It is made up of our thoughts. If a man speaks or acts with a pure thought, happiness follows him, like a shadow that never leaves him. He abused me. He beat me. He defeated me. He robbed me. In those who harbor such thoughts, hatred will never cease. He abused me. He beat me. He defeated me. He robbed me. In those who do not harbor such thoughts, hatred will cease. For hatred does not cease by hatred at any time. Hatred ceases by love. This is an old rule. The world does not know that we must all come to an end here, but those who know it, their quarrels cease at once. He who lives looking for pleasures only, his senses uncontrolled, immoderate in his food, idle and weak, Mara, the tempter, will certainly overthrow him as the wind throws down a weak tree. He who lives without looking for pleasures, his senses well controlled, moderate in his food, faithful and strong, him Mara will certainly not overthrow any more than the wind throws down a rocky mountain. He who wishes to put on the yellow dress without having cleansed himself from sin, who disregards temperance and truth, is unworthy of the yellow dress. But he who has cleansed himself from sin is well grounded in all virtues and regards also temperance and truth. He is indeed worthy of the yellow dress. They who imagine truth in untruth and see untruth in truth never arrive at truth but follow vain desires. They who know truth in truth and untruth in untruth arrive at truth and follow true desires. As rain breaks through an ill-thatched house, passion will break through an unreflecting mind. As rain does not break through a well-thatched house, passion will not break through a well-reflecting mind. The evildoer mourns in this world, and he mourns in the next. He mourns in both. He mourns and suffers when he sees the evil of his own work. The virtuous man delights in this world, and he delights in the next. He delights in both. He delights and rejoices when he sees the purity of his own work. The evildoer suffers in this world, and he suffers in the next. He suffers in both. He suffers when he thinks of the evil he has done. He suffers more when going on the evil path. The virtuous man is happy in this world, and he is happy in the next. He is happy in both. He is happy when he thinks of the good he has done. He is still more happy when going on the good path. The thoughtless man, even if he can recite a large portion of the law, but is not a doer of it, has no share in the priesthood, but is like a cowherd counting the cows of others. The follower of the law, even if he can recite only a small portion of the law, but having forsaken passion and hatred and foolishness, possesses true knowledge and serenity of mind, he, caring for nothing in this world or that to come, has indeed a share in the priesthood. Chapter 2 On Earnestness Earnestness is the path of immortality, nirvana. Thoughtlessness, the path of death. Those who are in earnest do not die. Those who are thoughtless are as if dead already. Those who are advanced in earnestness, having understood this clearly, Delight in earnestness, 
and rejoice in the knowledge of the elect. These wise people, meditative, steady, always possessed of strong powers, attain to nirvana the highest happiness. If an earnest person has roused himself, if he is not forgetful, if his deeds are pure, if he acts with consideration, if he restrains himself and lives according to law, then his glory will increase. By rousing himself, by earnestness, by restraint and control, the wise man may make for himself an island which no flood can overwhelm. Fools follow after vanity, men of evil wisdom. The wise man keeps earnestness as his best jewel. Follow not after vanity, nor after the enjoyment of love and lust. He who is earnest and meditative obtains ample joy. When the learned man drives away vanity by earnestness, he, the wise, climbing the terraced heights of wisdom, looks down upon the fools. Serene he looks upon the toiling crowd, as one that stands on a mountain looks down upon them that stand upon the plain. Earnest among the thoughtless, awake among the sleepers, the wise man advances like a racer, leaving behind the hack. By earnestness did Magavan, Indra, rise to the lordship of the gods. People praise earnestness. Thoughtlessness is always blamed. A bhikshu, mendicant, who delights in earnestness, who looks with fear on thoughtlessness, moves about like fire, burning all his fetters, small or large. A bhikshu, mendicant, who delights in reflection, who looks with fear on thoughtlessness, cannot fall away from his perfect state. He is close upon nirvana. Chapter 3 Thought As a fletcher makes straight his arrow, a wise man makes straight his trembling and unsteady thought, which is difficult to guard, difficult to hold back. As a fish taken from his watery home and thrown on dry ground, our thought trembles all over in order to escape the dominion of Mara, the tempter. It is good to tame the mind, which is difficult to hold in and flighty, rushing wherever it listeth. A tamed mind brings happiness. Let the wise man guard his thoughts, for they are difficult to perceive, very artful, and they rush wherever they list. Thoughts well guarded bring happiness. Those who bridle their mind which travels far, moves about alone, is without a body, and hides in the chamber of the heart, will be free from the bonds of Mara the tempter. If a man's thoughts are unsteady, if he does not know the true law, if his peace of mind is troubled, his knowledge will never be perfect. If a man's thoughts are not dissipated, if his mind is not perplexed, if he has ceased to think of good or evil, then there is no fear for him while he is watchful. Knowing that this body is fragile like a jar, and making this thought firm like a fortress, one should attack Mara, the tempter, with a weapon of knowledge. One should watch him when conquered, and should never rest. Before long, alas, this body will lie on the earth, despised without understanding, like a useless log. Whatever a hater may do to a hater, or an enemy to an enemy, a wrongly directed mind will do us greater mischief. Not a mother, not a father will do so much, nor any other relative. A well-directed mind will do us greater service. Chapter 4 Flowers Who shall overcome this earth and the world of Yama, the lord of the departed, and the world of the gods? Who shall find the plainly shown path of virtue as a clever man finds out the right flower. The disciple will overcome the earth, the world of Yama, and the world of the gods. The disciple will find out the plainly shown path of virtue, as a clever man finds out the right flower. He who knows that this body is like froth, and has learnt that it is as unsubstantial as a mirage, will break the flower-pointed arrow of Mara and never see the king of death. Death carries off a man who is gathering flowers and whose mind is distracted, as a flood carries off a sleeping village. Death subdues a man who is gathering flowers and whose mind is distracted before he is satiated in his pleasures. 
As the bee collects nectar and departs without injuring the flower, or its color, or scent, so let a sage dwell in his village. Not the perversities of others, not their sins of commission or omission, but his own misdeeds and negligences should a sage take notice of. Like a beautiful flower, full of color and without scent, are the fine but fruitless words of him who does not act accordingly. But like a beautiful flower, full of color and full of scent, are the fine and fruitful words of him who acts accordingly. As many kinds of wreaths can be made from a heap of flowers, so many good things may be achieved by a mortal when once he is born. The scent of flowers does not travel against the wind, nor that of sandalwood, or of tagara and malika flowers, but the odor of good people travels even against the wind. A good man pervades every place. Sandalwood or tagara a lotus flower, or a vasiki, among these sort of perfumes, the perfume of virtue is unsurpassed. Mean is the scent that comes from tagara and sandalwood. The perfume of those who possess virtue rises up to the gods as the highest. Of the people who possess these virtues, who live without thoughtlessness, and who are emancipated through true knowledge, Mara the tempter never finds the way. As on a heap of rubbish cast upon the highway, the lily will grow full of sweet perfume and delight. Thus, the disciple of the truly enlightened Buddha shines forth by his knowledge among those who are like rubbish, among the people that walk in darkness. Chapter 5 The Fool Long is the night to him who is awake. Long is a mile to him who is tired. Long is life to the foolish who do not know the true law. If a traveler does not meet with one who is his better or his equal, let him firmly keep to his solitary journey. There is no companionship with a fool. These sons belong to me, and this wealth belongs to me. With such thoughts a fool is tormented. He himself does not belong to himself. How much less sons and wealth! The fool who knows his foolishness is wise at least so far, but a fool who thinks himself wise, he is called a fool indeed. If a fool be associated with a wise man even all his life, he will perceive the truth as little as a spoon perceives the taste of soup. If an intelligent man be associated for one minute only with a wise man, he will soon perceive the truth as the tongue perceives the taste of soup. Fools of little understanding have themselves for their greatest enemies for they do evil deeds which must bear bitter fruits. That deed is not well done of which a man must repent, and the reward of which he receives crying and with a tearful face. No, that deed is well done of which a man does not repent, and the reward of which he receives gladly and cheerfully. As long as the evil deed done does not bear fruit, the fool thinks it is like honey, but when it ripens, then the fool suffers grief. Let a fool month after month eat his food like an ascetic, with the tip of a blade of kusa grass, yet he is not worth the sixteenth particle of those who have well weighed the law. An evil deed like newly drawn milk does not turn suddenly, smoldering like fire covered by ashes, it follows the fool. And when the evil deed, after it has become known, brings sorrow to the fool, then it destroys his bright lot. Nay, it cleaves his head. Let the fool wish for a false reputation, for precedence among the bhikshus, for lordship in the convents, for worship among other people. May both the layman and he who has left the world think that this is done by me. May they be subject to me in everything which is to be done or is not to be done. Thus is the mind of the fool, and his desire and pride increase. One is the road that leads to wealth, another the road that leads to nirvana. If the bhikshu, the disciple of Buddha, has learnt this, he will not yearn for honor, he will strive after separation from the world. Chapter 6 The Wise Man, Pandita If you see an intelligent man who tells you where true treasures are to be found, who shows what is to be avoided, and administers reproofs, follow that wise man. It will be better, not worse, for those who follow him. 
Let him admonish, let him teach, let him forbid what is improper. He will be beloved of the good, by the bad he will be hated. Do not have evildoers for friends. Do not have low people for friends. Have virtuous people for friends. Have for friends the best of men. He who drinks in the law lives happily with a serene mind. The sage rejoices always in the law, as preached by the elect. Wellmakers lead the water wherever they like. Fletchers bend the arrow. Carpenters bend a log of wood. Wise people fashion themselves. As a solid rock is not shaken by the wind, wise people falter not amidst blame and praise. Wise people, after they have listened to the laws, become serene like a deep, smooth, and still lake. Good people walk on whatever befall. The good do not prattle, longing for pleasure, whether touched by happiness or sorrow. Wise people never appear elated or depressed. If whether for his own sake, or for the sake of others, a man wishes neither for a son, nor for wealth, nor for lordship, and if he does not wish for his own success by unfair means, then he is good, wise, and virtuous. Few are there among men who arrive at the other shore, become arhats. The other people here run up and down the shore. But those who, when the law has been well preached to them, follow the law, will pass across the dominion of death, however difficult to overcome. A wise man should leave the dark state of ordinary life, and follow the bright state of the bhikshu. After going from his home to a homeless state, he should in his retirement look for enjoyment, where there seemed to be no enjoyment. Leaving all pleasures behind, and calling nothing his own, the wise man should purge himself from all the troubles of the mind. Those whose mind is well grounded in the seven elements of knowledge, who without clinging to anything rejoice in freedom from attachment, whose appetites have been conquered, and who are full of light, are free even in this world. Chapter 7 The Venerable There is no suffering for him who has finished his journey and abandoned grief, who has freed himself on all sides and thrown off all fetters. They depart with their thoughts well collected. They are not happy in their abode. Like swans who have left their lake, they leave their house and home. Men who have no riches, who live on recognized food, who have perceived void and unconditioned freedom, nirvana, their path is difficult to understand, like that of birds in the air. He whose appetites are stilled, who is not absorbed in enjoyment, who has perceived void and unconditioned freedom, nirvana, his path is difficult to understand, like that of birds in the air. The gods even envy him whose senses, like horses well broken in by the driver, have been subdued, who is free from pride and free from appetites. Such a one who does his duty is tolerant like the earth. Like Indra's bolt, he is like a lake without mud. No new births are in store for him. His thought is quiet, quiet are his word and deed, when he has obtained freedom by true knowledge, when he has thus become a quiet man. The man who is free from credulity, but knows the uncreated, who has cut all ties, removed all temptations, renounced all desires, he is the greatest of men. In a hamlet or in a forest, in the deep water or on the dry land, Wherever venerable persons are hunter dwell, that place is delightful. Forests are delightful. Where the world finds no delight, there the passionless will find delight, for they look not for pleasures. Chapter 8 The Thousands Even though a speech be a thousand of words, but made up of senseless words, one word of sense is better which if a man hears, he becomes quiet. Even though a gata, poem, be a thousand of words, but made up of senseless words, one word of a gata is better, which if a man hears, he becomes quiet. Though a man recite a hundred gatas made up of senseless words, one word of the law is better, which if a man hears, he becomes quiet. If one man conquer in battle a thousand times thousand men, and if another conquer himself, he is the greatest of conquerors. 
One's own self conquered is better than all other people. Not even a god, a Gandava, not Mara with Brahman, could change into defeat the victory of a man who has vanquished himself and always lives under restraint. If a man for a hundred years worship fire in the forest, and if he but for one moment pay homage to a man whose soul is grounded in true knowledge, better is that homage than sacrifice for a hundred years. Whatever a man sacrifice in this world as an offering or as an oblation for a whole year in order to gain merit, the whole of it is not worth a quarter, a farthing. Reverence shown to the righteous is better. He who always greets and constantly reveres the aged, four things will increase to him, these life, beauty, happiness, power. But he who lives a hundred years vicious and unrestrained, a life of one day is better if a man is virtuous and reflecting. And he who lives a hundred years, ignorant and unrestrained, a life of one day is better if a man is wise and reflecting. And he who lives a hundred years idle and weak, a life of one day is better if a man has attained firm strength. And he who lives a hundred years not seeing beginning and end, a life of one day is better if a man sees beginning and end. And he who lives a hundred years not seeing the immortal place, a life of one day is better if a man sees the immortal place. And he who lives a hundred years not seeing the highest law, a life of one day is better if a man sees the highest law. Chapter 9 Evil If a man should hasten towards the good, he should keep his thoughts away from evil. If a man does what is good slothfully, his mind delights in evil. If a man commits a sin, let him not do it again. Let him not delight in sin. Pain is the outcome of evil. If a man does what is good, let him do it again. Let him delight in it. Happiness is the outcome of good. Even an evil doer sees happiness as long as his evil deed has not ripened. But when his evil deed has ripened, then does the evil doer see evil. Even a good man sees evil days as long as his good deed has not ripened. But when his good deed has ripened, then does the good man see happy days. Let no man think lightly of evil, saying in his heart, It will not come nigh unto me. Even by the falling of water drops, a water pot is filled. The fool becomes full of evil, even if he gather it little by little. Let no man think lightly of good, saying in his heart, It will not come nigh unto me. Even by the falling of water drops, a water pot is filled. The wise man becomes full of good, even if he gather it little by little. Let a man avoid evil deeds, as a merchant, if he has few companions and carries much wealth, avoids a dangerous road, as a man who loves life avoids poison. He who has no wound on his hand may touch poison with his hand. Poison does not affect one who has no wound, nor is there evil for one who does not commit evil. If a man offend a harmless, pure, and innocent person, the evil falls back upon that fool, like light dust thrown up against the wind. Some people are born again. Evildoers go to hell. Righteous people go to heaven. Those who are free from all worldly desires attain nirvana. Not in the sky, not in the midst of the sea, not if we enter into the clefts of the mountains, is there known a spot in the whole world where death could not overcome the mortal. Chapter 10 Punishment All men tremble at punishment. All men fear death. Remember that you are like unto them, and do not kill, nor cause slaughter. All men tremble at punishment. All men love life. Remember that thou art unto them, and do not kill, nor cause slaughter. He, who seeking his own happiness, punishes or kills beings who also long for happiness, will not find happiness after death. He, who seeking his own happiness, does not punish or kill beings who also long for happiness, will find happiness after death. Do not speak harshly to anybody. Those who are spoken to will answer thee in the same way. 
Angry speech is painful. Blows for blows will touch thee. If, like a shattered metal plate, gong, thou utter not, then thou hast reached nirvana. Contention is not known to thee. As a cowherd with his staff drives his cows into the stable, so do age and death drive the life of men. A fool does not know when he commits his evil deeds, but the wicked man burns by his own deeds, as if burnt by fire. He who inflicts pain on innocent and harmless persons will soon come to one of these ten states. He will have cruel suffering, loss, injury of the body, heavy affliction or loss of mind, or a misfortune coming from the king, or a fearful accusation, or loss of relations, or destruction of treasures, or lightning fire will burn his houses, and when his body is destroyed, the fool will go to hell. Not nakedness, not plaited hair, not dirt, not fasting or lying on the earth, not rubbing with dust, not sitting motionless, can purify a mortal who has not overcome desires. He, who though dressed in fine apparel, exercises tranquility, is quiet, subdued, restrained, chaste, and has ceased to find fault with all other beings. He indeed is a brahmana, an ascetic, sramana, a friar, bhikshu. Is there in this world any man so restrained by humility that he does not mind reproof as a well-trained horse the whip? Like a well-trained horse when touched by the whip, be ye active and lively, and by faith, by virtue, by energy, by meditation, by discernment of the law, you will overcome this great pain of reproof, perfect in knowledge and in behavior, and never forgetful. Well-makers lead the water wherever they like. Fletchers bend the arrow. Carpenters bend a log of wood. Good people fashion themselves. Chapter 11 Old Age How is their laughter? How is their joy, as this world is always burning? Why do you not seek a light, ye who is surrounded by darkness? Look at this dressed-up lump covered with wounds, joined together, sickly, full of many thoughts, which has no strength, no hold. This body is wasted, full of sickness and frail, this heap of corruption breaks to pieces. Life indeed ends in death. Those white bones like gourds thrown away in the autumn, what pleasure is there in looking at them? After a stronghold has been made of the bones, it is covered with flesh and blood, and there dwell in it old age and death, pride and deceit. The brilliant chariots of kings are destroyed. The body also approaches destruction but the virtue of good people never approaches destruction. Thus do the good say to the good. A man who has learnt little grows old like an ox. His flesh grows, but his knowledge does not grow. Looking for the maker of this tabernacle, I shall have to run through a course of many births, so long as I do not find him, and painful is birth again and again. But now, maker of the tabernacle, thou hast been seen, Thou shalt not make up this tabernacle again. All thy rafters are broken, thy ridgepole is sundered. The mind, approaching the eternal, has attained to the extinction of all desires. Men who have not observed proper discipline, and have not gained treasure in their youth, perish like old herons in a lake without fish. Men who have not observed proper discipline, and have not gained treasure in their youth, lie like broken boughs sighing after the past. Chapter 12 Self If a man holds himself dear, let him watch himself carefully. During one at least out of three watches a wise man should be watchful. Let each man direct himself first to what is proper, then let him teach others. Thus a wise man will not suffer. If a man make himself as he teaches others to be, then, being himself well subdued, he may subdue others. One's own self is indeed difficult to subdue. Self is the Lord of self. Who else could be the Lord? With self well subdued, 
a man finds a lord such as few can find. The evil done by oneself, self-begotten, self-bred, crushes the foolish, as a diamond breaks a precious stone. He whose wickedness is very great brings himself down to that state where his enemy wishes him to be, as a creeper does with the tree which it surrounds. Bad deeds and deeds hurtful to ourselves are easy to do. What is beneficial and good, that is difficult to do. The foolish man who scorns the rule of the venerable, of the elect, of the virtuous, and follows false doctrine, he bears fruit to his own destruction, like the fruits of the kataka reed. By oneself the evil is done, by oneself one suffers, by oneself evil is left undone, by oneself one is purified. Purity and impurity belong to oneself, no one can purify another. Let no one forget his own duty for the sake of another's, however great. Let a man, after he has discerned his own duty, be always attentive to his duty. The World Do not follow the evil law. Do not live on in thoughtlessness. Do not follow false doctrine. Be not a friend of the world. Rouse thyself. Do not be idle. Follow the law of virtue. The virtuous rest in bliss in this world and in the next. Follow the law of virtue. Do not follow that of sin. The virtuous rests in bliss in this world and in the next. Look upon the world as a bubble. Look upon it as a mirage. The king of death does not see him who thus looks down upon the world. Come, look at this glittering world like unto a royal chariot. The foolish are immersed in it, but the wise do not touch it. He who formerly was reckless and afterwards became sober brightens up this world like the moon when freed from clouds. He whose evil deeds are covered by good deeds brightens up this world like the moon when freed from clouds. This world is dark. Few only can see here. A few only go to heaven, like birds escaped from the net. The swans go on the path of the sun. They go through the ether by means of their miraculous power. The wise are led out of this world when they have conquered Mara and his train. If a man has transgressed one law and speaks lies and scoffs at another world, there is no evil he will not do. The uncharitable do not go to the world of the gods. Fools only do not praise liberality. A wise man rejoices in liberality and through it becomes blessed in the other world. Better than sovereignty over the earth, better than going to heaven, better than lordship over all worlds is the reward of the first step in holiness.